name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dear Jesus, we bring ourselves before you, before the throne of mercy, and ask that you would receive our hearts, receive our prayer today, Lord. We are in the process of being transformed by the power of your love and by the power of your word. Your sanctifying grace just rushes upon us. So we ask this morning that you would let your glory fall, Father, on each person who shares, Lord, shares their heart. Open up our hearts to receive what you want to speak to our hearts, and not so much about what we say, Lord, but what you want us to hear. And so we thank you, Jesus, for this word, and let it come alive in our hearts and in our lives, in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. amen. So on page 22 is our scripture reference. Uh, it is John 17, 15, and let us uh, pray it together. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. Amen. Amen. Okay. So if you... Um, my name is Karen, and I'm sharing the meditation and revelation for the scripture. I said, Dear Jesus, I do feel as if you are calling me in a greater way to be in the world. More and more of my time is spent on things that I did not see myself doing, nor even wanting to do. But I do know you are with me, and I feel your pleasure and your presence in that time. What joy this is to me now. What joy is all, all I can say. Thank you for the privileges you give to me to be your hands and feet, your prayers, your heart and your mind to those who need you. I love you, dear Lord, and I lift my voice and my life to worship and praise you in it all. And I know you inhabit the praises of your people. The enemy cannot bear this praise. And I thank you for Angie who showed me the way to battle evil, and I trust you will protect me. And this song kind of came to me to, I, to pray to him, lead me, Lord, guide me, Lord, along the way, and I will not stray. And if you know that song, it's an Elvis song, apparently. Um, <laughs> I didn't know that. Um, I just got a simple, you have listened well, and I am guiding you, and you will know I am with you. My name is Ellie, and I will be sharing my meditation on the scripture page. I had a dear friend who used to say, Oh, stop the world, Lord, I just want to get off. And I, I used to think that was really funny. I don't know why, but she would always be saying that. However, in this day, with all its sorrows and tragic situations, I'm sure many may think that we struggle with many things, but here is Jesus asking the Father not to take us out of the world, but to protect us from the evil one. Those of us who are believers and are working to evangelize and do the will of the Father need to keep our feet planted on the rich soil. When we are called out of this world, we will be welcomed into the kingdom. And I'm Lisa, and I'm sharing my revelation from the Lord on the Scripture Medi uh, Memorization Day. I need you in the world to change the world. Be my light to those who are in darkness. All of you with bright lights cannot stay hidden in a closet. You must go out into the darkness and shine your light there. I have empowered you in my spirit to battle the evil one. I will protect you. Keep your eyes on me. My name is Mary, and I'm sharing meditation and revelation for the first day. My dearest Lord Jesus Christ, through the sacrament of marriage, you poured all your graces in good times and in difficult times. You were my guiding light, my counselor, and sustainer. Through receiving the Eucharist, you helped me with your strength to love when times were rough and I thought I could not go on. And now, I'm so glad you helped me to persevere, it was so worth the struggle since I know I have grown in my faith, seeing how many miracles you've given me as I pray day and night, you were there right beside me. I love you, my Lord Jesus Christ. The revelation is, I am your strong deliverer. I am your strong defender. 
your peace. When your husband was not present, I was with you in your presence, holding you tenderly, loving you. You are mine and I am yours forever. I will never let go of your hand. I'm sharing the meditation on day one. Um, uh, I was just starting my lesson, that the, getting ready to start my lesson, and I received a phone call just before from, um, and this is the praise. Um, some of you will, that were here last year will remember that I was praying for, my son went out to pray for a young, my, my cousin's son, 29-year-old, who um, fell off the cliff and um, was paralyzed. And if you remember that. Anyway, um, he began to, he, to, to a miracle, he was able to walk within two months. The doctors gave him a 5% chance of walking, and they said it was, we've done everything now, it's up to, up to God whether these things, these neurons are going to reconnect, and he worked very hard, and he had a lovely, lovely, lovely girlfriend named Mary, um, and uh, she stayed by his side the whole time. She would not leave him, and they were the dearest couple, and he, I found out that he was going to propose to her right before the accident happened. When the accident happened, he, he couldn't propose to her. He, said, I, he told her he was going to propose to her but he couldn't um, because the accident happened. It was very sad. So I've been waiting, waiting, waiting to hear this news, and I get this phone call from my cousin. She was, I was the first person she called. She said, I can't contain my joy, but he proposed to her this morning. I'm so excited. I'm so excited that God brought them to this place in less than a year's time. She said, he's walking upstairs. He's, I used to play lacrosse. He's actually tossing the lacrosse ball. Amazing, amazing. Um, but anyway, then I go upstairs and I have my lesson. I had, and it was on marriage. It was, I was like, oh, an opportunity to give praise to God. So that's what this is. I just want to give praise and honor to you for on this blessed day, as I am beginning this Bible study, I received a call from Mary Ellen and Sean, and that Sean and Mary are being married. He finally proposed. Thank you, thank you for their faithfulness to one another during this tremendous trial. Thank you for your healing touch in his life and their lives that they would proclaim in their thank you that they sent out to everybody who helped them that they believed they had had a miracle. Thank you for how they looked to you as their hope. Oh Lord, please bless this marriage. Unite them as one in you in the Holy Sacrament and teach them your ways. Let them seek you first in love and be loved to each other as they have been. Bless them with children and let them know that you are always with them. Thank you for letting me and my son be part of all of this. We shared in their sorrow, and now we get to share in their joy. Amen. My name is Barbara, and this is my revelation for day one. I made them male and female, and blessed their union with sacramental grace, so they might lead each other to heaven, and to teach their children to glorify my Father. But many have discarded our plan for them. With their wanton lives and their self-centered love, it will not yield them peace or joy. And their loveless legacy will spread chaos. Pray unceasingly in the year of mercy, for my time of justice will follow. Good morning. I'm Edie, and I am going to share meditation and revelation day two. When I was growing up, especially in my high school years, I have so many wants. I want to be this, I want to be that. You see, I was not born with a silver spoon in my mouth, nor was I given a face that mounts a thousand sheep. <laughs> in other words, I was discontent with my situation. I thought then that my future will not be as bright as the girl next door. But I continued to go on with my life, despite of all the disappointments and frustrations, and I was able to attain my goal. While I was in the process of moving on, I remember I asked God for help, although I have doubts in my heart that he will listen. But I continue to pray anyway. Years later, while I was meditating one day, I remembered 
how dissatisfied I was with myself, especially my physical appearance. I shook my head and burst into laughter for being so silly. <laughs> In my conversation with God, I asked him with a feeling of self-pity why he did not grant my wants. And he responded, Everything you ask of me, you receive. I could not understand it. Nothing I asked for was given to me. <laughs> he added, look around you and tell me what you see. Think back on those days in high school when you wish you were this and you were that. Now, take a good look on yourself what you have become, and carefully scrutinize your grandchildren, especially Taylor. As I focused my thoughts on Taylor, I was flabbergasted, and I burst into tears. Taylor, my granddaughter, is the girl I wanted to be Aww. when I was growing up. She is beauty and brains, and so much more. The moral of my story here is to abide to what God has called you for. Be content with what you are and what you have. God gives what you desire in due time, His way. Now, that my revelation, the Lord says, if you desire anything, see to it if it is worthy to be desired. See that it be always with the fear of God and humility of heart. And above all, you ought to be with a resignation of yourself to commit all to me and say to me, this is what he wants me to say to him, Lord, you know what is best let this or that be done as you will, if it pleases you and honor you. Give what you will, how much you will, and what time you will. Put me where you will, and do with me in all things according to your will. If you ask this way, I will do it so. That's, the, that's what he told me. And I just want to show you the girl I want to be. <laughs> yes, she's a freshman now at USC, majoring in neuroscience. Thank you. Lucia, and I'm sharing my meditation revelation on day two. And I said, Dear Lord God, what a gift you've given us through Jesus, expiation for our sins and justification through our faith. And the faith is through the grace you freely offer and give to all of us who accept. I am your people, and I've given you my heart, but it still needs cleansing and breaking and teaching and molding and softening. And the more I study your word, the more I worship you, the more, I love, the more love you give me, and the more I want to love you and please you with a pure heart. Continue to transform my heart, dear Lord. Guide my mind and heart and actions in all things. The revelation, um, initially I got the song, Change My Heart, Oh Lord, and read the rest. And, uh, and then he said, Lucia, continue to examine your heart and life with a fine tooth comb and with honesty. Look carefully, and I will show you areas where you need to repent. The more you clean out your heart, the freer you will be. I am with you through the process. Fear not. Amen. Amen. I'm Josephine, and I'm sharing on day two. O oh Lord my God, to know you is to love you. Look into my heart, and where there is any lack of love, please fill it with your perfect love. I never tire of asking you for love. Let me love you, Lord, more and more each day. Love is all that matters. 
It is the greatest treasure I could ever hope for. You have brought me this far, and I know you will never abandon me. Thank you for circumcising my mind and heart so I can walk in the light of your love. And my revelation was one sentence from the Lord. Deep love atones for many sins. Sacrificial love atones for sins of others. Hi, I'm Jen, and I'm sharing on day three meditation. <clears throat> Dear Jesus, what an interesting idea for me to contemplate marriage ver versus single life. I choose marriage. I have to humbly disagree with Paul on some points and raise some wonders of marriage not addressed by Paul. I have the honor to raise children for him in his kingdom on earth and in heaven. If all children st stayed, or if all Christians stayed away from marriage, how would we have future saints? The seeds planted in childhood are strong. I am blessed to have a husband who is loving me into the kingdom. Would I have such a committed and um, faithful helpmate if I were single? I believe that the same world pressures would find me if I were single. Work, the internet, idle wasted time. There is beauty in NFP, chastity in marriage. I am grateful for this gift in marriage. I am grateful for a sacramental marriage where we are united in Christ to share love and to spread our love and his love. And my revelation was, be joyful in your marriage. It is contagious. Take care to speak in love. Hold your tongue. Testify to marital pure love. Mm -hmm. I'm Virginia Hawkins, and I was chicken, but here I am. Um, so this is about the scripture day. Um, my meditation, uh, so the scripture, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. <clears throat> Yes, please, Lord, refine me, use me, and please protect me. You know that we were just in an accident. Thank you for preserving our lives and the life of the woman who did us. Please, please heal us all. And the Lord said, I do protect you. Ask me to deliver you from accidents. There will be resistance because I have claimed you and your husband as my own. Ask me to hide you in my heart and ask my mother to hide you in her mantle. Don't leave my mother standing outside when you invite me in. My mom never acts without my knowledge and consent. Learn from her fiat. I thank the Lord for all of the sharing. It really makes a difference. Um, and you see how when we come before the Lord, it's always different. We're unique in His eyes.